Good morning, my single friends. I am Jillian Miller. I'm the director and I'm the founder of Citywide Singles. I wanna invite you to join me this morning for tea time and prayer as I bring the word of God to you from Proverbs 20. Uh, the scripture of the day is, do not say I will pay you, pay you back for your wrong. Wait for the Lord and he will deliver you. I thought this was a great scripture because it's one of those pills that sometimes is hard for us to swallow. Sometimes it's hard to think about um, not wanting to repay somebody for the wrong that they've done to us. There's so many times when somebody does us wrong that we would just want to go, you know what, I'm going to take care of this myself. <laughs> and you know what, the Spirit of the Lord many times will quiet us and say, mm -mm, do you want to handle this or do you want me to handle this? So I want to bring to you a, a story here in just a minute from the Old Testament that kind of backs up this, uh, this scripture, a supporting scripture that's in Proverbs 25 that says, If your enemy is hungry, give him some food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. In doing so, you will reap burning coals on his head and the Lord will, will reward you. Okay, so that seems like kind of a funny thing that if somebody is um, has come against you and has made themselves an enemy of yours, maybe for whatever reason, the two of you had a falling out. Maybe you didn't intend to make an enemy of somebody, but it happens. I mean, it happens all the time in the workplace. It happens between relatives. It happens between friends. It could happen at, at any given time that somebody misinterprets maybe something that you said and all of a sudden they find themselves being an enemy of yours. Who knows how this comes about, but the Word of God points out and says, you know, don't try to take revenge for yourself. Don't, don't try to uh, say, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pay you back for what you've done. Wait for the Lord and He'll allow Him to deliver you. You know, I was really thinking a lot about waiting on the Lord. Um, there were times when David would be, uh, Oh, what would you call it, uh, blindsided by his enemy. And uh, you would see David go into the into the quiet place, the secret place in, in the Lord, and he would start to pray and ask God, how do you want me to handle this? You know, do you want me to go after them? And, and I think that's what made David so famous is that he took territory for the kingdom of God. He took the territory that God told him to take, but he did it through wisdom and discernment. And he did that by waiting on the Lord and seeking God's face on how to do this. But going back to the scripture about from Proverbs 25 that talks about giving your enemy um, food if he's hungry, giving him water if he's thirsty, there's actually a story about this. If you look in 2 Kings 6, this is a story of Elisha. Elisha was a prophet of the Lord. And so here's the funny thing is that every time the, the king of Aram would start to, um, would start to uh, attack the Israelites, Elisha would, would tell the king of Israel, don't go this way because they're going to be waiting for you. Don't go this way. He knew exactly what their battle plan was ahead of time. It was like having the playbook uh, of a football team. <laughs> and so uh, Aram, uh, uh, the king of Aram thought that there was somebody amongst them that was, uh, that was a traitor, that was a, you know, a double, say like a um, serving, serving the other side. And so they finally found out that it was Elisha, the prophet, who was hearing directly from God and giving the strategies of Aram to the king of Israel so that you know, the, the king of Israel was always successful and was able to avoid the plots of his enemy. <laughs> so what does he do? He sends his men out after this prophet to capture uh, the prophet Elisha. And guess what? One day he walks out, and this is that famous story about the chariots of fire, where his servant walks out and he says, oh my gosh, like we're completely surrounded. <laughs> and he says, you know what? Don't worry about it. The, those who are with us are more than those uh, who are with them. And he prays and asks God to take, a, a, to, to give his servant a, a visual to be able to see um, the chariots of fire that were, that were part of the army of God in the spirit realm so that he could see that greater are those who are with us than those that are with them. <laughs> and so he just kind of heads like right on towards them. 
knowing that the army of God is with them. And as he's going, he's praying, God, just, just give them a blindness. And so as he gets to them, they've kind of been struck with this blindness. And they, I, I don't know if they can sort of see that there's a figure of a man. And he's, he's like, you know, the person you're looking for isn't here. This isn't even the right city. And he leads them back to Samaria. And, and then he gets them into the city walls and this is where Israel is. And then he says, okay, let them see now. <laughs> and that's completely surrounded by Israel and the king of uh, the Israelites. And Israel, the king of Israel asks Elisha, okay, so what do you want me to do? You want me to kill them? <laughs> and he says, no, no, you know what? We're, we're going we're gonna to give them something to eat. We're going to give them something to drink. They even make it like a big celebration, like a festival. And they treat them well. He, they treat, this is the enemy. This is the people that were trying to capture Elisha and take him out because he was giving insider information from the Lord, of course, to the king of Israel. So instead of killing off their enemy, they, they fed him, they treated him well, and then they sent them back to their master. <laughs> How crazy is that? And, but you know what? After that, they never attacked him again. <laughs> They never came back back around. So it kind of reminded me of that scripture um, uh, that says um, that, that says when a man's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to live at peace with him. Here's the thing is there's going to be days and times when we offend people or we unintentionally make enemies with, with people. Maybe it's our fault, maybe it's their fault, who knows? But you know, one of the prayers we can pray is found in the very next chapter of Proverbs, Proverbs 21, that says that the heart of a king is in the hand of the Lord, and like a water course, he turns it any way he wishes. <laughs> I used to pray this a lot when I was married, when I knew my husband was mad at me. <laughs> As I would say, God, just turn his heart, just soften his heart towards me, and God, I just pray that the heart of the king will be turned uh, like that, like a water course. Father God, turn his heart back to you. And so you just ask God to soften that person's heart towards you. Ask God just to cover them and that we speak blessings over those who are our enemies. I think Jesus said it best when he says, if, um, he said in Matthew 5, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, and do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. You know, I think the reason why Jesus was saying this is that as we pray for people, people that have set themselves up to be our enemies, people who are mean to us. My mom actually taught me this when I was <laughs> young and in school, that we were going to pray for the, the, the kids that were mean to me at school. And I thought it was really sweet because as we spoke blessings over them, you know what, somehow they'd come back around and they'd be friendly. And so I think that God grants us favor with people, even mean people, when God softens their hearts and we speak blessings over them. And so rather than cursing people, and which is always the temptation, we can just say, God, just bless them. God, just bless them. We just cover them in your love and your peace, and we just ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. So I want to speak a blessing over you today and know that God is with you. He, he loves you. He's going with you. He's going before you. And he's got an awesome plan for you. Father God, I just speak blessings over each and every person here today. Father God, I pray that you surround them with your favor as a shield. Strengthen them and uphold them with your righteous right hand, Father God. God, I thank you for your love, your peace, your mercy, and your grace. And we just cancel any and all orders and plans of Satan and his wicked spirits that would try to keep them from the will of God today. We choose to be transformed by the renewing of our mind, and we pulled on all strongholds in the name of Jesus. And we say, not by might and not by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. So, Father God, we just, we lose a blessing on our friends and, and also those who have been our enemies, Father God. And we pray, Father God, that our ways would be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. I really believe that when we walk in love with others, even when we don't feel like it, even if we've got to love them from a distance, <laughs> um, that it's pleasing to the Lord because we're a reflection of his glory. We're a reflection of who he is. And so many times it means that we have to be gracious with people, even though they may not deserve it. So, uh, you know, I pray, Father God, that he would put a, a watch upon my mouth, that I wouldn't sin against him. 
because our, our words have the power uh, to hurt somebody or they have the, the power to, to be kind to people. So I encourage you to be kind today. I encourage you to pray for those who have hurt you and know that God is with you. God has a good plan for you, plans to bless you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a hope and a future. So go forth in his strength and his power, knowing that you are a child of God and he's got this. Love you.